Hi everybody, welcome back, welcome back. In this tutorial, which is part two of the Twitter Analytics Dashboard Live uh, app that I created two weeks ago, we are going to learn about the second tab, the Trends tab. In this Trends tab, we are going to connect to a Twitter API and we're going to extract the information and put it inside a Dash data table with 20 different um, tweets. This is going to analyze or show us the most trending topics currently, and this will update every three minutes and give us some examples. And also we're going to see how to create a word cloud, which will give us a, a frequency of words analysis on a Plotly image figure. So we're gonna see how to do that as well using Plotly Express and Dash. As always, uh, you can go into my GitHub right here. This is the full, if you go into social media, Twitter right here, this is the full um, app. Um, so just download all these files and go into the trends. This is the one we're going to use to use today. If you want to go back to the first video, it will tell you all about, which I did two weeks ago, it will tell you all about how I you, you work with tabs, how you transfer between tabs, and how to um, create this tab, which also does a different types of, of analysis between likes and friends and followers and likes. Okay, so that was two weeks ago. Click on the video above if you wanna see um, the first part. But in sec this second part, we're only gonna focus on the Dash data table and the word cloud. All right, so come along, come along. Let's go into, into our PyCharm, into our trends.py file. So let's see what we're doing differently here. All these libraries, all these um, imports is something we did um, two weeks ago as well. So it's the same thing. Uh, but we're, the, the new imports are NLTK and Word Cloud. We're gonna import N NLTK. Oh, you're gonna have to do this maybe. I think you have to do this once. Download stop words only once on your terminal, on your command prompt, and then um, hashtag this out. And this is so we can do this. These top words are words that we don't want the word cloud to analyze because a lot of the tweets have HTTP or URL or, or the word thank you in them or, or the word plotly graphs in them. Um, so I don't want, I don't want that, those words to be analyzed, so I'm going to take them out. In addition to all the other uh, stop words in English, which is is, am, I, uh, you can print this out and see and see what this is. Okay, so this is our layout. And in the layout, we have uh, one row with the title, most trending topics, as you can see here, most trending topics. And in the next row, we have two column components. This first column component is six columns wide, and it has uh, just a div with uh, an empty children. This is where we are going to put our data table. And to the right, we have an empty an empty div. See, children is empty. And in here, in this side, this div, we're going to put our word cloud. So you see here, the children of this table div, the children of this table div and the callback, this is where we're going to return the data table. So all this data table goes inside the children of this div right here, okay? So this is our, our layout together with the interval. The interval is the last uh, component that you cannot see on the layout. And this just says every three minutes, activate, trigger this interval. So at the beginning, this will be zero, then this will be one. After three minutes, after th uh, six minutes, this would be two. After nine minutes, this would be three. Every time the, the interval triggers, and intervals goes up by one. All right, so we need the callback to connect between the interval and update the information on, on the dashboard. Update this data and update this data. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take the interval, uh, the end intervals of the, of the interval component as the callback input. So that's why in intervals, we're gonna put here timer. This refers to this. 
and this at the beginning remember is zero and then after three minutes this is one after six minutes this is two and so on and so on so when when this is triggered at the beginning and then after three minutes it's gonna we're going to do something here and then we're going to return this data table into the the empty div into the children right okay so what are we doing here first we're creating three empty lists and then I'm connecting to uh, the Python API, um, Twitter API. I'm going to connect to get trends current. Now, if you missed this, this API is coming from the first video two weeks ago. I'm saying from app import API. So you go to the app.py and you'll see um, API. And this is my token, um, my security codes in order to um, enter the Twitter, Twitter API. This Twitter API or this library we're using is this library here is the Python Twitter. This is Python Twitter is a library that is a Python wrapper for the Twitter API. So we can access Twitter API with Python. All right. So I went, I, I have my API, I am connecting to um, Twitter's API and I'm going to use the method get trend current. So if I go to this website right here, the uh, uh, module module documentation, get trends current is get the current top trending topics globally. All right, so that's what I'm going to get here. The top uh, current trends for this is a big list. Of, this is a big dictionary, and or a list of dictionaries that is uh, is a uh, status type of Twitter. And I'm saying for trend in trends, I'm going to print the trends out so you can see what it's printing. See, this is every single trend, one here, one here, one here. And I'm saying um, for every trend or, or trending topic, if the trend um, has a tweet volume, if this key exists, the key, the trend, where is it? Volume, time step, if this key right here exists inside this um, this topic this this trend then then do something right because sometimes some of these tweets won't have tweet volume and and I want that information because I want to so show you how many um, times this topic has been trending 73,000 times so only if you we have tweet volume key inside this um, dictionary then Add to this empty list, the trending name list, add to it the name, the, the key value of name. So the name, we're gonna add this. This is the hashtag right here. We're gonna add this to as the first one in the list, and this will be the second item in the list, and this will be the third item in the list, the key value of name. And what is this? This is the trending topic. So as you can see here, the trending topic is something in Arabic. This trending tap topic is a hashtag in Arabic. And then we have this one, this one, and then Neto. Let's see what Neto is, is, a, is a trending topic with 29,000 um, tweets. And this Neto trending topic, let's see while it loads. Um, this is one of the tweets on Neto, Mentor, Neto, and Neto. Uh, so I guess something that has to do with, with soccer. Neto by Frankie Jong. Yeah, something that has to do with soccer, probably a soccer match going on. <laughs> so uh, this is one of the tweets that from the um, trending topic Neto. All right, so let's go back to the code, and we're going to say uh, put the name inside this list and append to the second list, the trending volume um, list, append trend dot the tweet volume, right? So the first one will have 19,000, the second or third tweet, the fourth topic will have 31,000 and so on and so on. And inside the trending URL, this empty list, um, append the trend URL, so append these URLs so we can have them inside inside a big list, right? And then just put everything inside, convert all these lists into a dictionary, because this will allow us to put everything into a pandas data frame. And I'm putting everything into a pandas data frame so I can put it into a dash data table easier. So I'm saying the trending key will have a list of trending names, all these names. 
the URL will have the list of all these URLs. One, two, three, there's like 20 URLs and so on and so on. And then I'm gonna put this dictionary, convert it into a pandas data frame. This a function is important. So you can insert the URL link inside the dash data table. It's not easy to put a URL link inside the dash data table. It's not as simple. You have to apply this function to it, which is right here on the very top, this function right here because this is how it's supposed to look like, okay? So we have our uh, new URL column and data. We're gonna print this out so you can see how it looks like all the way at the bottom here. This is our, this is our um, Pandas data frame. It has um, IDs, it has a trending um, topic or hashtag, URLs in the middle, and then a volume, how many tweets uh, tweeting that topic. And then I'm building the data table. So then all I have to do, I'm returning this data table into the empty div, right? So this data table is going to have an ID and we're gonna say for I in, for each column in the, in the data frame columns, so there's three columns here, right? Trending, URL and volume. So for each column, if the column, if I is equal trending or volume, then just, you know, just make a regular column, a regular dash data table column, name equals I and ID equals I. But if not else, if not, meaning if the column equals URL, we're going to do it this way. This is going to be the metadata of the column. This is going to be the same, but the type is going to be text and the presentation mode is going to be markdown. This is how you put the URL inside the dash data table. So this allows us to do this, these URLs right here, right? And see these trending and clickable on these URLs. Um, so let's see here, uh, data, uh, we're gonna put all these rows inside the, the dash data table. This is going to see, talk about the markdown options, the options of this column, HTML true, because it's HTML, and link target. This will allow us to open the link. If I click on it, it will open in a different tab. This is what, this is what underscore blank means. Native, um, page size six, so only six tweets um, per page. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, um, and then just style the, the, the dash data table like this. You can read all about my um, uh, tutorial on the introduction to um, the dash data table. If you wanna learn all about the data table in, in dash and all these different props, I go into more detail in the link above. Okay, so this is a dash data table, which goes into uh, the children of this div right here, right? So it's gonna go in here. Now we're gonna go, we're gonna create the, the word cloud, right? And the word cloud is the same thing. We're gonna take the input of uh, the end intervals. So we're gonna take the, uh, the interval component and every three minutes when this interval becomes one, increases by one, one, two, three, we're going to trigger this callback function, do something, build our word cloud, insert into the figure, and then return a DCC graph with the figure inside this component. So this returns this fig, this DCC graph, all of this returns into the children right here, right here. So this will be to the right of the, of the data table. All right, so how do we create this word cloud right here? What we do, is um, we're creating an empty list and then we're gonna connect to the API. We're gonna get the get favorites method and get favorites, so we're gonna copy this. Let's go back to our documentation. I'm gonna find get meth favorites. This method is returns a list of status objects like tweets, I guess, representing favorite tweets. And this returns up to 200 most recent tweets for the user. So if the screen name is, uh, I have to put the screen name and my screen name here is going to be Plotly Graphs. So I'm gonna take the Plotly Graphs Twitter account 
and I'm going to get the, the 100 most recent tweets that Plotly Graphed liked or that Plotly Graphed graphs um, favored, right? Um, I guess that, 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 that heart sign. So um, I'm going to get 100 of those tweets. So I want to do an analysis, a word cloud analysis of what, what do these tweets that Plotly Graphs liked, what kind of words do they have in there? They have dash, they have Plotly, thank you, dash, data shader, data shader. So I want to do that analysis. So I pull this information as X, and then I say for status in X, because it's, it's many different tweets, 100 different tweets, I'm going to um, insert into this list, I'm going to insert the status.text. Right, so you can print this out if you want. You can go for status in X, um, print status, just to see what what comes out. All right, um, and so I'm going to take the text, and all these tweets are going to go into um, into this list. So you're going to have a hundred different strings of a hundred different tweets, and then here I'm going to join all strings into one string. Right, I'm going into all these strings. Uh, all, this list of all these 100 tweets and I'm going to join everything so it's one very long string with space between each each tweet. And now I can put it inside the word cloud. So I do my word cloud and this is a library, word cloud library that I imported here from the top. Um, generate uh, my, my word cloud, uh, use stop words, so don't analyze words like HTTP, is, uh, uh, she, and, if, background, height, and then generate all tweets. So um, analyze this long, long, uh, big list of this long string. So analyze this long string. And then I have to put everything into a Plotly Express uh, image show, this image figure. I'll put my word cloud in there. I'll, I'll choose a different template. I'll make the margins a little bit smaller, make the x-axis and y-axis uh, not visible, and then return this inside the Plotly graph um, uh, dash uh, graph component. So that's how you get an analysis of 100 tweets that were liked by Plotly Graph's Twitter account and the words that a uh, words analysis or words frequency of those tweets, right? Tutorial, excited, dashboard, Plotly, of course, um, uh, data shader, and you can zoom in a little bit and you can see and you can see other words in there as, as well. Oh, Nicholas, he's um, the creator of Plotly Express. So I'm not surprised he's here as well. Cool guy. Um, so this is how this is how uh, we create this dashboard. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I I really want you to learn how to use uh, tabs with this Twitter Analytics dashboard. I want you how to learn how to use the data, the data table, a word cloud, how to connect to um, the Python API. Don't forget we're using this library, so. There's many different, this Python Twitter library. So there's many different methods you can use in order to analyze your tweets or somebody else's tweets. If you have any questions, please let me know under the YouTube uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support me on, on, on Patreon, feel free to click on the link above. I welcome all your support. It means a lot to me and it actually allows me to continue in making these wonderful videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, never give up. Keep practicing and always remember we're better together. So, so help each other out until next time. Bye. -bye.